Oh, hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Michael Boy. I'm here to read, remember, repeat. And we just want to let you guys know, you know, we could be doing something selfish, things for ourselves, right? But we started a charity. And this is very unselfish on our part because what we want to do is give back to the kids, the youth, the orphanage, the homeless, the people that don't have or don't have those new ideas because they're stuck in a revolving door. So what we want you guys to do is definitely reach out to us. This is the link right here. Help us save a lot. Click the link in bio. Read, remember, repeat. Thank you, thank you again. You are far too kind. You are far too kind. Thank you, thank you. Thank you again. This is guy, Michael Nigga Boy. We are back with another Read, Remember, Repeat episode. And we left off on page 190 of Outwitting the Devil. Um, this is an amazing book. Definitely written by Napoleon Hill. Um, yeah, man, this is this is the same author that made Think and Grow Rich. So if you have heard of Think and Grow Rich, you know, then you know that Napoleon is definitely one of the elites. You know what I mean? It's late night. I hope everybody had an amazing day. Tomorrow we wake up for another one. Right. So we left off on page one on 190. Now, let's get it. Question. Do I understand you to imply there is a relationship between sex and poverty? Answer, yes. Where sex is not under definite control. If allowed to run its natural course, sex will quickly lead one into the habit of drifting. Question. Is there any relationship between sex and leadership? Answer, yes. All great leaders in every walk of life are highly sexed, but they follow the habit of controlling their sex desires switching them into a driving force behind their occupation. Question. Is the habit of overindulging in sex as dangerous as the habit of taking narcotics or liquor? Answer. There is no difference between these habits. Both lead to hypnotic control through the habit of drifting. Question. Why does the world look upon sex as something vulgar? Because, answer, because of the vulgar abuse people have made of this emotion. It is not sex that is vulgar. It is the individual who neglects or refuses to control and guide it. Question, do you mean by your statement that one should not indulge the desire for sex? Answer, no, I mean that sex, like all other forces available to man, should be understood, mastered, and made to serve man. The desire for sex expression is a natural as the desire for food. The desire can no more be like than can no more be killed than one can entirely stop a river from flowing. If the emotion of sex is shut off from the natural mode of expression, it will break out in some other less desirable form, just as a river will. If dammed break through and flow around the dam, the person who has self-discipline understands the emotion of sex respects it and learns to control and transmute it into constructive activities. Question. Just what damage is there in overindulgence of sex? Answer. The greatest damage is that it depletes the sources of man's greatest driving force and wastes, with, and wastes without adequate compensation man's creative energy. It, di it dissipates energy needed by nature to maintain physical health. Sex is nature's most useful therapeutic force. It depletes the magnetic energy, which is the source of an attractive, pleasing personality. It removes the sparkle from one's eye and sets up discord in the tones of one's voice. It destroys enthusiasm, subdues ambition, and leads in inevitabil in inevitably and leads, it, it destroys enthusiasm, subdues ambition, and leads inevitably to the habit of drifting on all subjects. Question. I would like for you to answer my question in another way by telling me what beneficial ends the emotion of sex may be made to attain if mastered and transmuted. Answer. Control sex supplies the magnetic force that attracts people to one another. It is the most important factor of a pleasing personality. It gives quality to the tone of voice and enables one to convey through the voice any feeling desired. It serves as nothing else can serve to give motive power to one's desire. It keeps the nervous system charged with the energy needed to carry on the work of maintaining the body. It sharpens the imagination 
and enables one to create useful ideas. It gives quickness and definiteness to one's physical and mental movements. It gives one persistence and perseverance in the pursuit of one's major purpose in life. It is a great antidote for all fear. It gives one immun immunity against discouragement. It helps to master laziness and procrastination. It gives one physical and mental endurance while undergoing any form of opposition or defeat. It gives one the fighting qualities necessary under all circumstances for self-defense. In brief, it makes winners and not quitters. Question, are those all the advantages you claim for controlled sex energy? No, they are only some of the more important benefits it provides. Perhaps some will believe the greatest of all the virtues of sex is that it's nature's method of perpetuation of all living things. This alone should remove all thought that sex is vulgar. Question, I gather from you what you say, that the emotion of sex is a virtue, not a fault. Answer, it is a virtue when controlled and directed to the attainment of desired, desirable ends. It is a fault when neglected and permitted to lead to acts of lust. Question, why aren't these truths taught to children by their parents in the public schools? Answer, the neglect is due to ignorance of the real nature of sex. It is just as necessary in maintaining health for one to understand and properly use the emotion of sex as it is to keep the body sewer system clean. Both subjects should be taught in all public schools and all homes where there are children. All right, family, source time. We'll be right back. There was a story I was listening to before I got here. And it was the story of this man who lost his keys. And he lost his keys inside his house. And the man was found looking for his keys by this lady. And then the lady asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm looking for my keys. Well, she said, if you lost your keys, where did you lose them? He said, inside the house. She said, well, why are you not looking in the house? He said, well, it's dark inside. And the story was in a representation of a lot of us because, you know, um, it's harder to find the solutions in the place and where they actually are. We don't like to look there. Most of us don't look inside ourselves, the darkness within ourselves for that first solution to be able to do for self. A lot of you all are looking for the keys right now. You be stressing and you always looking outside yourself but you never go into that internal place and spark light from the darkness to find who you are, to navigate through the world with all that resolution of power within your mind. See, I always have to start with the mind because I always say 80% mindset, 20% skill set. If you have the right mindset, you can master any skill set. And we are back, family, on page 193. The book ends on 250. Okay. So we got some time still on this book, right? Hopefully we'll be done with this book by next week. But I'm excited. I'm excited because this is an amazing book. So jumping back into the Q&A, right? Question. Wouldn't the majority of parents need instructions on the proper function and use of sex before they could intelligently teach their children? Answer. Yes. And so would the public school teachers. Question, what relative position of importance would you give to the need for accurate knowledge on the subject of sex? Answer, it is next to the top of the list. There is but one thing of greater importance to human beings. That is accurate thought. Step away from the Q&A, right? It quotes, there is but one thing of greater importance to human beings. That is accurate thought, right? There is but one thing of greater importance to human beings that is accurate thought question do i understand you to say that knowledge of the true functions of sex and ability to think accurately are the two things of greatest importance to mankind answer that is what i intended you to understand accurate thinking comes first because it is the solution to all men's problems the answer to all his prayers the source of opulence and all material possessions. Accurate thinking is aided by properly 
controlled and directed sex emotion because sex emotion is the same energy as that with which one thinks. It begins with those who desire self-determination sufficiently to be willing to pay its price. No one can be entirely free spiritually, mentally, physically, and economically without learning the art of accurate thinking. No one can learn to think accurately without including as a part of the needed knowledge information on the control of sex emotion through transmutation. Question. It will be a great surprise to many people to learn there is so close a relationship between thinking and sex emotion. Tell us now about the third appetite and let's see what it has to do with self-discipline. Answer. The habit of expressing loosely organized opinions is one of the most destructive of habits. Its destructiveness consists in its tendency to influence people to guess instead of searching for the facts when they form opinions, create ideas, or organize plans. The habits develops a grasshopper mind, one that jumps from one thing to another, but never completes anything. And of course, carelessness in the expression of opinions leads to the habit of drifting. From there, it is only a step or two until one is bound by the law of hypnotic rhythm, which automatically prohibits accurate thinking. Step away from the Q&A. Quote, right? This quote says, The habit of expressing loosely organized opinions is one of the most destructive of habits. So, the habit of expressing loosely organized opinions is one of the most destructive of habits. So I want you to let that ponder. I'm going to read it one more time. The habit of expressing loosely organized opinions is one of the most destructive of habits. Deep. Let's go. Question. What other disadvantages are there in free expression of opinions? Answer. The person who talks too much informs the world of his aims and plans and gives to others the opportunity to profit by his ideas. Wise men keep their plans to themselves and refrain from expressing uninvited opinions. This prevents others from appropriating their ideas and makes it difficult for others to interfere with their plans. Question. Why do so many people indulge in the habit of expressing uninvited opinions? Answer, the habit is one way of expressing egotism and vanity. The desire for self-expression is inborn in people. The motive behind the habit is to attract the attention of others and to impress them favorably. Actually, it has just the opposite effect. When the self-invited speaker attracts attention, it usually is unfavorable. Question, yes. What other disadvantages has the habit? Answer. The person who insists on talking seldom has an opportunity to learn by listening to others. Question, but isn't it true that a magnetic speaker often puts himself in the way of opportunity to benefit himself by attracting the attention of others through his powers of oratory? Answer, yes, a magnetic orator does have an asset of tremendous value in his ability to impress people by his speech, but... He cannot make the best use of this asset if he forces his speech on others without their invitation. No single quality adds more to one's personality than the ability to speak with emotional feeling, force, and conviction. But the speaker must not impose his speech upon others without being invited to do so. There is an old saying that nothing is more worth than its actual cost. This applies as well to the free, uninvited expression of opinions as to material things. Question. What about people who volunteer their opinions by expressing them in writing? Do they also suffer by lack of self-discipline? Answer. One of the worst pests on earth is the person who writes uninvited letters to people of prominence. Men in public office, moving picture stars, men who have succeeded in business or written a best-selling book, and people whose names appear often in the newspapers are continuously besieged by people who write letters expressing their opinions on all subjects. Question. But the writing of uninvited letters is a harmless way of finding pleasure, though. Self-expression. Is it not? What damage does one do by the habit? 
Now, we're going to step away from the Q&A. Take a moment to remember that letter writing was about the only way to communicate in the written form when Napoleon Hill wrote this manuscript. As you read, think about how his thoughts would apply to today's world of blogging and social networking. Answer. Habits are contagious. Every habit attracts a flock of its relatives. The habit of doing anything that is useless leads to the formation of other habits that are useless, especially the habit of drifting. But that is not all the dangers associated with the habit of indulging in uninvited expression of opinions. The habit creates enemies and places in their hands dangerous weapons by which they may do great injury to the one who indulges in it. Thieves and confidence and confidence men and racketeers pay big prices for the names and addresses of the writers of uninvited letters known as they do the writers of these letters become easy victims of all manner of schemes that result in the loss of their money they refer to the writers of such letters as nuts if you wish to know how foolish people are who write uninvited letters read the nut column of any newspaper the column in which the paper publishes the volunteer, voluntary opinions of its readers, and you will see for yourself how the writers of such letters antagonize people and invite opposition from others. Family, we ending this off on page 197. I hope you guys are learning a lot. I just learned just now, like, you know, even posting on social media, you know, sometimes it's uninvited opinions. So sometimes you may post something that, just might be an uninvited opinion, you know what I mean? Some people may not like that. I know I've seen posts that I just didn't like. And um, not that it created or made me an enemy towards that person. But, you know, we got to watch what we talk about and just loosely throwing out opinions, right? But you still got to be yourself. You got to understand what you're doing, understand what you're saying, and stand on it. But you already know how it go. It's your boy, Michael Mugger Boy. Re Remember Pete. I see y'all tomorrow. Let's go.